So many parents and so many people supporting or enabling somebody with drug addiction will say, well, they were prescribed for it. Mm -hmm. Well, they won't, they, my kid won't go down that line. My kid, that's, it's what happens. Yeah. It does not discriminate. It doesn't yeah. care if you were really a great parent or if they were an honor roll or if they were the baseball star. If you are seeing your child progress in that line, we know where it ends. It ends with the needle in their arm with heroin. Let's start with some popular opioids. Yeah. What are they? So let's break it down a little bit. Let's, let's, because most people, I shouldn't say most people, but many people start with prescription opiates. Mm -hmm. And you can even, unfortunately, buy these illegally on the street, right? So terms that you're going to hear, oxycodone, oxycontin, roxycodone, uh, vicodin, or hydromorphone, you're going to hear these terms, fentanyl, which is a synthetic opiate, uh, morphine, dilaudid, these are all prescription opiates, right? And then, of course, you have heroin, which is the street or illicit version that's derived from the poppy plant, mm -hmm. right? So you're going to hear those terms. You have the doctor prescribed ones that I listed, and there's many, many more. Or you're going to have the, the heroin version, right? Which, is, which also I want people to know, because if you're suspecting that a loved one or someone you care about is doing this, you need to identify it. If you see something, you need to know what's going on. And heroin comes in a powder, okay? It comes in either a white powder, a brown powder, or there's something called black tar heroin, which is a sticky, blackish, brownish substance, okay? It usually comes in folded paper. It almost looks like when you buy a stick of gum, mm -hmm. right? And it's in like a folded little wrapper, but much smaller than that. So the paraphernalia that you'll see are these little folded pieces of paper. It can also come in a bag, mm -hmm. like a tiny little bag. So that brings us to how it's packaged and sold. And people that use these drugs will have this slang. So when I am doing detox for someone, the first question I ask someone is, how many bags a day are you using? Okay. So a bag. If they're doing heroin. If this is heroin. Okay. Yeah, good point. Thank you for clarifying that. How many bags a day are you using? And that sort of gives you a figure of how you're going to treat them and how severe their disorder is, right? So one bag on the street is a very small amount of heroin. It's usually like one use, all right? Some people can spread out one bag over more uses, but it's a minimal amount. It's usually the smallest amount that it comes in. Street value right now as we sit here, and of course this is different all across the United States depending on mm -hmm. supply and demand. Yep. Anywhere from $10 to $25 per bag, right? Depending on how in demand it is or the purity. Um, so that's a bag. How many bags a day are you doing? People do two, three, four, five bags. Now, if someone tells me they're doing a bundle a day, that's 10 bags. Bundle equals a 10. A bundle equals 10 bags. These are terms that you hear. I do a bundle a day. 10 bags, okay? There's something called a brick, right? A brick is 50 bags, all right? So these are just, just amounts, and these are these terms you hear, and they throw these terms around. And are people saying, I do a brick a day? I, absolutely, I've had, as crazy as it sounds, I've had people that do 100 bags per day, yeah. I mean, th that's just blowing my mind on so many levels. One, yeah. that your body can tolerate it. Two, that you can afford it. Yep. Uh, and three, that you're still alive. Right. So, right, and think about the numbers that we just talked about, right? So it's, it's expensive, and if you don't get it, you are gonna be sick. Right. So sick. Right. So you will sell your soul to that's get right. this stuff, right? Yeah. Now, I want everyone to, that's listening to this series to understand something, that you have the powder or you have this tar. Now, there are various ways to get it into your body. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if it's a pill, you're gonna swallow it. If it's a pill, people will crush it, and snort it, they will crush it, mix it with water, and inject it. Or if you're buying the heroin in the street in a, in a fine powder or a tar, you're gonna mix it with water, and they're gonna heat it up. So they need something to heat it up in, and the common thing that they use is a metal spoon. Mm -hmm. So what you may see around the house, or in the room of the person, or under their bed, or in the nightstand, is what's called a shooting kit. And a shooting kit is usually a metal spoon, something to heat it, 
a lighter, mm -hmm. right, or uh, anything that's going to create heat, and some water. Sometimes they'll use cotton balls to draw up into the syringe so they don't pull any material from the fluid into the syringe. So it's like a filter. So they'll use a cotton ball, a spoon, As a, a heating filter. device. Right, so what they'll do is they'll, they'll put the, the powder, a little bit of water in the spoon, and they bend the spoon so you can hold the spoon upright. Mm. They heat it, and then it, it becomes uh, like a, uh, it mixes with the water, and then they put a cotton ball on it, and then they put the needle on the cotton ball and draw through so it kind of, so the fluid is clean. Clean, which is certainly not clean. Right. Um, but cleaner. What maybe. are they hoping that the that the cotton ball well, absorbs just out. just material that's you know like granular material or something that might be painful to inject or okay. maybe things that they don't really want to inject because remember that if you're buying this stuff illicitly, it has been cut multiple times, mm -hmm. right? So they get it as pure as they can get it. The dealers. And in order to make profit, they cut it. And they mm -hmm. cut it with all kinds of stuff. Everything from talc powder, mm -hmm. like baby powder basically, to other powdery substances, anything. And I've heard all kinds of things, from aspirin to gabapentin, which is a white powder um, a prescription medicine. But there are a lot of things they can cut with. You have no idea what they're cutting with. No idea. So the point is that you may see the paraphernalia, the spoon, the heating element, bottles of water, syringes. Mm -hmm. You might find dusty powder from where they're crushing it up. You might find the little wrappers, tiny little wrappers. You might find little bags. All right. These are the things that loved ones need to look out for when you're suspecting use. In preparing for the interview, I heard something about wash or washing mm -hmm. with heroin users. Can you explain that? Yeah. So when a heroin user is re referring to that, they're at a point where they are so desperate that they can't obtain any more heroin. Maybe their dealer's out of town or who knows what the story is. So what they'll do is they'll go to the location that they last used or used most often and they'll take a credit card or some sort of scraper and they will literally scrape the, the surface of the table to gather whatever they can enough for a little bit of a dose. That's how desperate they are. Mm. Kyle, again, from a medical person from a doctor to think that you are going to scrape the surface of a dirty table mm -hmm. to gather dust and dander mm -hmm. and bacteria mm -hmm. and some heroin and potentially inject that into your body mm -hmm. is just so profoundly frightening to me. Mm -hmm. But that's the desperation that people will go to. So that's the term wash. Wash is all the leftover powder from all the previous uses yeah. and I'm so desperate, I'm going to scrape it all together and get as much as I can out of it. If somebody has a 80% of heroin users started with prescription medication, if you have a Percocet, for example, can you crush that up, heat it up, and inject it? They do. Okay. They do. They okay. certainly do. And, and they might not even heat it. They might just mix it with water just mix and, it and inject it. it. So a prescription pill can be swallowed, crushed, and snorted, or mixed with water and injected. Yeah. Heroin can only be injected? No, you can inhale it. Okay. And there are smokable forms like that the tarry substance. Mm -hmm. You can smoke that. Oh, you can smoke you it. You could smoke it. Now, so, can I smoke a Percocet? I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> I've never heard of that. And that's okay. a good point. I don't so the think smoking is then for heroin. A or certain black type of heroin. heroin. Okay. Yeah, that you can smoke. So there are certain types of heroin that you can smoke. Okay. So, and this is important, and we're going to get to the addiction qualities of this, but the method of delivery also plays a very big part in how addictive it is. Mm. Because the faster it reaches your brain, the more enhanced the experience is, and the more likely that you are gonna develop a faster and more profound addiction. An injection is the fastest way to get it to your brain. So, from my understanding, people start swallowing the pills, then they go to snorting, then they may go to smoking and or injecting. Yeah. And that's them chasing that high, getting the drugs to their brain faster? I'm going to break this down for you, Kyle, okay. that I feel like at this point in my career, I've seen this so much that when someone starts telling me their story of addiction, I feel like I can stop them. You're like, I know where this goes. And I can provide the timeline. Yep. And this is the timeline that I'm going to tell you. Yep. They were prescribed an opiate because they had some sort of surgery or they got something done. They used it for a while and they ran out. 
they became addicted. They started buying the pills illicitly on the street. That became way too expensive. Someone said, why are you paying $10 a pill for a Percocet when you can get a whole bag of heroin for 10 bucks? Then they start inhaling it. And then someone says, what are you inhaling it for? You, you can't get high anymore because it's not giving you that buzz. You got to inject it. So then they go to injection. That's the progression. That is a really big thing for people to hear, especially parents. And here's why. Because you have seen so many people go down this line. And that is the projection. That's it. Denial, I believe, is perhaps the human's strongest ability. Defense, right? Defense. Yeah. Yeah. And so many parents and so many people supporting or enabling somebody with drug addiction will say, well, they were prescribed for it. Mm -hmm. Well, they won't, they, my kid won't go down that line. My kid, that's, it's what happens. Yeah. It does not discriminate. It doesn't yeah. care if you were really a great parent or if they were an honor roll or if they were the baseball star. If you are seeing your child progress in that line, we know where it ends. It yeah. ends with the needle in their arm with heroin. And I've seen it literally hundreds of mm -hmm. times. And I've seen it with Ivy League captains of the sports teams mm -hmm. who started with the occasional pill at a party and ended up injecting heroin a few months later yep. and selling everything in their dorm room so they can get that. Yep. I've seen that progression so many times. Yeah. And it, you're right, it doesn't discriminate. I don't want to say it's inevitable, but it is certainly probable if yeah. you start abusing these drugs. Are there nicknames or slang for the types of drugs? So, yeah, right. So there are some names for like the specific heroin, but that changes. It's so funny. It's like, it's almost geographical, mm. right? So, you know, I don't want to start like listing a bunch of names, but you hear all different types of names. Like, of course, like Roxy, Oxy, you know, they say that, Perks. So what's you the know, difference just, between Roxy and Oxy? It's just a different formulation of an opiate. So okay. it's a, it's a semi-synthetic opiate. It's a different formulation. And, and what you find in the different formulations are half-life changes. So the pharmaceutical companies try to come up with compounds that last longer, mm -hmm. that are shorter. Mm -hmm. That's really the difference. Mm -hmm. Let's focus on heroin. There's a lot of slang terms yeah. or words that are used to describe heroin, what should people be on the lookout for? To, right? So it's important to know that these things do change over time. And uh, there's, there's some basics though, right? So people call heroin dope, smack, um, H, you'll hear people say H, Chiba or Chiva. Um, sometimes they'll refer to specific types of heroin by the color, Mexican brown, brown, right? And then they'll tar, they'll say tar, right? So that'll sort of denote the specific type. And then you will even have dealers that almost brand their own heroin mm. or their own heroin mixture. And that's going to be very local. It's going to be very, very geographical. So they might be specific names um, like Black Beauty or, you know, something like that. Or they'll come up with some silly name that's that denotes a specific dealer and what that dealer's product is because a dealer wants to sell. It's, it's crazy. It's almost like marketing for themselves, right? So you may hear these names thrown around, but the, the ones that sort of tried and true that sort of lasted several decades, dope, H, um, you know, uh, smack, you know, mm -hmm. that's what you hear a lot. Okay. I know that perks are sometimes short or perks are right. short for Percocet Correct. sometimes. Are there any other variations of that that people should be aware of? Not that I could think of offhand, but you just brought something to mind, Kyle, that is so important, and I'm so glad you brought up something like Percocet, is that the pills that are prescribed by doctors are not always just an opiate. So for example, Percocet is five or 10 milligrams, can be five or 10 milligrams of an opiate, plus acetaminophen, which is Tylenol. So there are combination pills. And you know why this is important? Because acetaminophen is incredibly liver toxic. Mm. So if you're taking the regular dose, like a Percocet 5325, which means five milligrams uh, opiate, 325 milligrams of acetaminophen, right, which is Tylenol. If you're taking the prescribed amount three times a day, that's okay. But if you're an addict, and you need five or six of those tabs at once, three to four times a day, that is an enormous amount of acetaminophen. 
and that's going to cause liver problems. Mm. You don't, and that's just trouble. So what people don't realize is that some of these opiate pills that are prescribed are combinations with other things, right? Very, very important. I didn't realize that. Yeah, it's important. Okay. Any other slang that people need to know when it comes to opioid addiction? I think, I think learning the paraphernalia, what you're going to see. Yeah. Um, I think understanding the difference between the pills, the synthetics, the semi-synthetics like fentanyl versus yeah. uh, heroin is very, very important. Um, the potency is different with all of these. And we'll talk about fentanyl. Fentanyl is 50 times more potent, 50 times more potent than heroin, right? And that's a synthetic substance that's made either by a pharmaceutical company or in somebody's garage, literally. So dangerous, dangerous stuff, right? So the potencies change with all these different medicines. That's why this is playing with fire because you never know what you're gonna get. You never know what you're gonna get. In terms of pills, is OxyContin the, the, the mother of all pills? Right, so that's a great question. So there was a study done where they linked likability to addiction likelihood, meaning when someone takes a prescription pill, how much do they like it? Mm. Right? So they, in this particular study, and I'm sorry if I can't quote it exactly, but they used various prescription opiate medications. They even, uh, uh, I think, used some heroin too, like actual street illicit heroin. And, you know, it was like Oxycontin, and it, there was fentanyl in there, there was like Vicodin in there, there was like a whole bunch of stuff. There was buprenorphine, which we're going to talk about, which is Suboxone, that was in there too. Mm. And the likability scale was highest for Oxycontin and heroin. Wow. Likeability, more than any of the others. That people liked taking people that liked, more than any right. of the others. Now, oxycodone, I know this is so many crazy terms, but oxycodone is different than oxycontin. Mm -hmm. Oxycontin just means that it's an extended release. It's supposed to last longer. That's the only difference. The only difference, right? So uh, if someone says oxycontin, that's just a long release version. Of, of oxycodone. That's the only difference. Got it. Um, but uh, yeah, so the likability leads to um, some of the addictive qualities. And it's important to note that oxys were very highly rated among illicit users. Yeah, that is important. In our next episode, we will talk about the risk factors associated with drug use and opioid addiction, but we're also going to talk about prevention. So all of that and more in our next episode. Thanks for watching. Check out the links below for more information on how to access this full series and subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch new mental health videos every week. Did you like what you heard in this video? If you want to ask a MedCircle doctor a question directly, you can learn how by visiting the links in the description below.